our purpose is to be community, but it is how are we contributing to ourselves, to our, like, you know, our folks in at Marmoset, like all of us, are we taking care of each other? And also our artist community. And of course, in turn, yes, our, you know, the clients get, they're satisfied and they're happy with, with what we're doing, but the artists are that other community that we're here to serve. And that's just as important. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of I Have Something to Say, where subject matter experts are unafraid and unapologetic about sharing their perspectives regarding issues that impact our lives. They speak up because basically they give a shit. So if you're tired of canned answers and want to finally hear real people cut through the BS and talk about real issues, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Sami Heyman Marrero from Urbander, and behind our mixer is our producer, Chris Mayoka from You Do You. Welcome, everyone, to I Have Something to Say. And uh, you all know that we really encourage independent thinkers, creators, businesses that actually work with a purpose in mind. And so I was introduced to Jose Maldonado, from Marmoset Music by our co-producer, Chris Mayoka. And uh, I'm just um, so excited to meet you, Jose, because I know that you guys really are opening up pathways uh, to independent artists and to indie, right, um, creators in terms of really connecting them with mainstream media and opportunities and we need we need to kind of clone you <laughs> and have like a gazillion of Jose Maldonados um, to really uh, continue to support right these these right. this access uh, to opportunities for creators um, and there's so many of us right and so welcome welcome to um, our program thank you for making time all the way from Portland Oregon people um, to be on on the show how are you. I'm doing well. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to just get a conversation going and spend some time with you today. And yeah, thanks again for having me. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your background because uh, you're a music lover, clearly, right? I, and so yeah. how how did you wind up, you know, at Marmoset? And you can go as far back as, as you want to. And, and yeah. why? Why did you take you know, this uh, career path, because a lot's changed in music, right? Since the, um, you know, the digital age kicked in, basically, right? right? And so tell, tell me, how did you get involved in the cre this creative space? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, it was a few years ago, I moved to Portland. Um, it's been, I think, seven years now. And I had heard about Marmoset uh, through a friend of mine, um, and, and then I also heard about this, uh, community of businesses called B corporations. I'm mm -hmm. not sure with them, but they're, well, we, I say we now, uh, since I'm at Marmoset, uh, we're a B Corp. And so we're in that space and having heard about, you know, the, the type of work, um, the impact that businesses in the B Corp space are creating. Um, that really drew me to Marmoset. And of course, uh, just the allure of music. Uh, I had no idea what I was going to be doing, really, but I just knew that I was very drawn to the company, its purpose, uh, the people, just kind of everything that it's about. Um, and once I landed at Marmoset, I realized, okay, this is actually, this is really what I have been expecting. Um, with a lot more of, you know, exceeded expectations too. Um, yes. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Really wonderful experience. That's great. And so what took you to Oregon? I mean, where, where did you go from? Yeah. You know what? So, uh, funny story. So I grew up in Southern California. I was born in Mexico, but I grew up in yeah. SoCal and, uh, I was working at, um, a resort in, in, in this town called Ojai. Uh, and I met uh, a friend of mine there, really good friend, and they are from Oregon um, and initially said like, hey, you know what, I'm thinking of moving back to my hometown or, you know, just going back to, to my family. 
And I know a thing or two about, you know, what it means to be close to the family. Uh, I grew up that way. So I realized like, oh, you know, great. We became really good friends. And uh, I actually have my mom's youngest sister who lives here. So I had visited the city before. And, mm. uh, you know, my friend asked me like, hey, would you like to move with me? And I said, heck yes. I was kind of like waiting for that opportunity to like leave, you know, like after college. The whole resort. To- all the yeah. resorts and all of yeah. that it, hospitality kind of, yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, so then that's, I said yes, and I was like, yeah, let's do this. So um, that's that's when we moved, I think, in 2016. Um, and, and yeah, I think it just, Portland, just in general, um, I would say has a very community-centric uh, business space and thought mm. leadership and and. Um, it's becoming a lot more like impactful in that way. So knowing that um, I was able to go into a, a space and make an impact immediately felt like something that I was meant to be doing. Yeah. Right? Rather That's than cool. just so you... clocking in and clocking out, that type of thing. Yeah, totally. So you were looking for a sense of community. That's oh, really cool. Totally. And so mm-hmm. were you already like a music um, aficionado, like, were you already like from, um, how do you say, um, career or an interests perspective? Yeah. yeah. It's funny because I, I take zero credit in music. I am a music lover, right? I'm a music, um, advocate. That's what I consider myself an advocate for artists. I love the art. I love everything about it. I mean, you know, music touches everyone and it has mm-hmm. historically been a part of everyone's, you know, just like how evolution, I guess, um, it plays a major part in, in life. So ever since I was young, I thought, okay, wouldn't it be so nice to work in music, but I never really imagined myself there. And just having landed a spot here, I just feel very, um, privileged in that sense. And we'll get to that part too of like what that all means and like being at Marmoset and using that privilege. Yeah. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. I would love to hear about that because when, you know, B, B corporations, right. It's all about social impact. It's all about right. measuring, right. Um, yes. you know, not, not only your, it's really about the purpose and about the, um, mm-hmm. uh, community, right. Transforming lives really yes. and uh, making a difference. And so, yeah. um, how, how were you exposed? How did this opportunity land um, on your, on your lap or, you know, at your footsteps? Yeah. Uh, so, so when I moved to Portland, um, I had worked for another B corporation, uh, company. It was a marketing agency, Mm -hmm. a small one that did a lot of like B2B, uh, marketing, Mm -hmm. um, for again, another community there because they were very, uh, much in touch with a lot of those B2B businesses here in Portland. So like small, Mm -hmm. you know, um, mom and pop shop type places. Um, so yeah. that was the community, but I also became involved in the B local PDX space, which was a community of those B corporation, um, you know, uh, companies. And so that's where I found out about the opportunity. Um, and I like, I applied the first time, didn't get it. Uh, oh. yeah, I know it's, it's one of those things. Um, <laughs> You know, there aren't a lot of music production and licensing, um, like houses, if you will, here in Portland, um, or even in the state of Oregon. Um, So, you know, everyone just thinks like music, oh, you must be in LA, or, you know, Nashville, or even New York, where the big, Um, but Portland has, you know, had a a quite, um, like a scene of music here, and there, it's it's a pretty rich area um, that I think this was like a good place for Marmoset to be in. So I think it just, just kind of took off from there. Um, But for me, it was, it was about building the connection with folks here. Um, Like I said, I didn't get it the first time. And a lot of folks that are currently at Marmoset have the same experience. They did not get hired the first time. They were relentless and they were like, we really want this job. So we'll apply for it. Well, the next opportunity and I was pretty much in that same boat I was like I really want to work there so I don't yeah. 
no is not a big deal. I'll, I, it's fine. I'll, you know, the next time around and the opportunity came about uh, six months later and I said, hell yes. So here I am now, three and a half years later. That's awesome. So did they call you? It's like persistent. Persistence is a thing, right? I mean, and manifesting what you mm -hmm. really want uh, and where you want to be. And so how did you learn about the work that Marmoset does and in really representing and opening up, right? And giving access to independent artists. Yeah. And um, I mean, and licensing, helping them license their music and really right. make a living. Hello, you know, yeah. through your craft, right? So how did you learn about them? Yeah, so I, um, when I was in the, the B Corp community, I had connected with Ryan, who's the CEO, um, and, uh, you know, he invited me to a listening hour, which is something that Marmoset used to have back pre-pandemic, of course, you know, but, um, yeah. in this really sweet uh, space um, that where they hosted um, community events um, at least once a month. Um, and these listening hours would bring in, uh, you know, clients from out of town, uh, community organizations, folks from the community in general mm -hmm. who wanted to just drop by and say hello. Um, and they would host events, whether it was, um, you know, a performance from one of our artists or showcasing the work that they've done in the sync licensing world or um, having a, an organization speak about what they do, uh, mm. you know, uh, all kind. It was a whole spectrum of things, but it was very community focused, and yeah. I, I loved being there. I felt so welcomed, and I think after that, I was like, "I've got. I'm going to keep my tabs on them." And so I did, like three years prior to the landing the job there. But yeah, yeah I were that they were already very involved in the community, and that um, it wasn't performative. It was actually like doing this, you know, connect like connect and building. Um, yeah beyond just like saying, hey, we're going to hold an event. It was for the purpose of the organization to have exposure, for the artists to have yeah. exposure, for people to come together. Um, and that's just, that's what community is, right? Like you're just yeah. people together. And it's funny because it's so simple, yet I don't know like how many, you know, like how many more folks are not doing the same. Yes, it's like people make it so complicated, right? And it's just yeah. like... Let's, if we elevate each other, then, right. you know, we um, unveil more opportunities, right? Correct. And so, yeah. yeah, and more talent too. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think that um, there's so much competition going on. So it sounds to me like you walked into this listening hour and you like the culture, you know, the vibe, right? And a lot of times yeah. it has to do with that vibe, that energy, um, that you get uh, from from people when 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 um, they don't know that you're watching, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, because they're probably just organizing, making sure that the artists get their exposure and that the organizations are uplifted and that people yeah. know. And then you're watching them, and you say, "Wait a second, these people. This is how they operate. This is what they do. You know, yeah. um, for fun." You know, it's really elevating others and uh, wow. creating opportunity. Then, yeah, I, I yeah. totally get it. That's that's what I'm drawn to um, as well. And so it's so difficult for artists. I would love to learn yeah. about the different type of artists and and how they feel once they get because you've you've been able to get, um, you know, some of these artists, some opportunities with big brands like Nike and, you know, yeah. and others, right. In terms of, and so what does that look like? What does that process look like? And how did you feel the first time that you were able to kind of make that type of connection that led to engagement? You know, it must be, it must be very fulfilling and gratifying to yeah. see that pan out. Right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was, I was very nervous, not going to lie, because I realized like from day one that we have a community to serve at Marmoset. Um, and that's why I keep saying like, I'm an advocate for music. Like mm -hmm. I am just here to elevate those artists, you know, to uplift their voices, to share with folks their craft and for them to uh, increase, you know, their, um, like, I guess just just make a, a better living through this space, mm -hmm. through this 
space. Um, and that's really like, it really like sunk in day one. Um, but the, I guess the first experience that I have is more or less and, and Chris, you know, folks that, that we know, uh, Chris from, you know, as an example, um, he would know that, um, sometimes there are like frantic calls in the ad mm -hmm. world where, uh, you know, a brand is like, Hey, we need to deliver this spot and we just got music approved or whatever the case. And this is supposed to go live tomorrow, whatever, you know, and, and we're, you know, on the licensing side, it's really important to have all your ducks in a row. So, um, answering that type of call, that was like my first time where it was like, Hey, Jose, you've got to get on a call with the client. They're going to have these expectations. We just have to deliver and, um, one of the cool things that I really liked about that experience was that the artists who they chose for this big brand, um, it was for a Grubhub spot. Um, the mm -hmm. artist chose is um, part of the LGBTQIA community and mm -hmm. uh, also someone that is from the Black community. So for me, it was like, oh, this is good. Like, I love to see this because that's another you know avenue where artists from different walks of life are going to have opportunities at marmoset um because we are uh purposefully not only um you know representing those artists but actually you know pitching their music working with them on projects doing all the things that we can measure right the impact mm -hmm. inside of the mm -hmm for it to not be performative and then just say on our website that we have diverse artists. That doesn't cut right. So right. I think I got a little deep in my response, but I think- um, No, that, I love it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. that moment was very, it still, you know, sticks in my head and it stands out, so. That's great. And, and yeah, I come from the media world in publishing though, right? Where it's like, <laughs> we have a remnant page. You know, it's like, emergency we need to fill it up because the publication is the publication is closing in two hours right so i totally yeah. get it and it's yeah. like you know it, it really like your your blood pressure goes through the yeah. roof because you have to like save the day basically and so yeah. that your first experience was a save the day moment but yeah. in that same um how do you say experience you then on top of that right provided an opportunity for yeah. someone who identifies as part of several, right? That intersectionality, yeah. right? As oh, part of several communities that are so grossly underrepresented and yeah. that perhaps don't have the same support as others, right? Um, yeah. To break through and land yeah. land a big opportunity like that. So that that's really, really cool. That's really cool. And And how did the artists feel? Oh, they were, they were so happy. I remember, um, you know, I actually get in touch with the artists sometimes whenever they have a spot or, you know, communicating yeah. with them and getting to know them. And I'm a fan of them anyway. So it was even better. And yeah, we had some conversations back and forth, but they were, they were elated. Um, and That's I, great. yeah, at Marmon said that had been their, their, you know, biggest, um, like placement, um, to date. That's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, the thing is, it's getting that first one, yeah. you know, it also helps boost confidence. It just, I mean, the, 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 everything that goes into that packed into yeah. that one big, right. Yeah. Um, break really means a lot, but I want to go back into the yeah. whole performative, yes. right. Conversation, because yeah. we see this right across the country that a lot of, um, big companies are pulling back, right, from their DEI efforts or not funding it properly or right. like rolling their eyes like, man, this is not working. What did we do? We've invested, right, all this money and effort, yeah. right, into something that um, pretty much becomes fluff, right? Uh, but it's because it's very superficial. And yeah. so I love yeah. what you're sharing about all it takes to really uh, deliver equity, right? And so you're clearly an equity practitioner, right? Yep. I consider myself one too. And it's really at all of those elements and resources right. that need to be put into place to ensure that the outcome is right. the best it could possibly be. And so what does that look like in the music industry? Because right now it's just so segmented 
right? It's so hard for artists, right, to um, to make it big. You know, you have a lot of one-hit wonders, and then that stress. You hear a lot of artists now becoming more open, even right. the famous and successful ones, right? Being yeah. open with all of these, uh, um, how do you say, documentaries about their lives and how their struggles and all of that, right? Yeah. Which is valid, right? But, yeah. you know, if you've already made it, you know, it's a lot easier, you know? So it's tell me, tell me about more. those, yeah, tell me about those support systems of, of that con continuum, right, of yeah. service that you, from the point of contact with an artist, right, right to landing the business, what are those um, um, policies, practices, yeah. best standards, right, that you guys put into place in right. this industry, in music, that I feel will probably be transferable to other industries, right, that yeah. are not, not just performative? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that because it's something that even I feel we may not talk about explicitly enough here at Marmoset or even like share with our community, um, whether it's, um, you know, the clients we work with or just the world at large. Um, you know, when we, when we sign client or when we sign artists to our uh, catalog, if you will, um, their music is the music that we are signing them for is exclusive to our catalog but if they have other music that they are working with and they want to pitch to other folks that is totally great with us mm -hmm. mm -hmm. own the rights to all of their music it's nothing like that it's licensor rights to the music that we are basically curating and want to represent and they agree to them and so they're able to pitch a lot of their other music and go and earn business you know in that way too we're not going to limit them or um, you know, kind of like, you know, put them in like a box and be like, Hey, you're, this is all, all or nothing. It's not like that. Right. Exactly. It's like, you're not, you're gonna, you're not the type of people to say, we're going to grab you by the balls and that's it. No, you're mine. No, no, that's not going to happen here. No, no, we want them. That's it's for us. It's like, Hey, it's like thinking, thinking of like a friend, like you yeah. have a good friend or a family member who you're just like, hey, you're doing some cool stuff. I think you should let the world know, you know, and like if you have like, you know, five of these things and I'm in the business of doing, you know, helping you out. Like if I have the opportunity to do, you know, business with one of those things that you're doing really good at. Great. But go and succeed with those others, you know, like mm -hmm. go and that happen and we love to see that and that's important for us now in our space when we are working with artists once we have that going um then we have a program called artist collapse um and that is where we have like our internal you know music producers and um a team of yeah basically our music producers with um artists from all different identities and we bring them together um you know an artist and maybe like a producer so some producer that makes like dope beats and then like an artist who's like you know i don't know a good rapper or a good lyricist or just like a really good pop artist but um they also represent the world you know so it's not just going to be you know the um homogenous top earners of the music space that we always see or accustomed to see um or you know it sometimes you have these really awesome artists that are like they're standout artists but it's like they're the only one in the space. No, we want to increase so it's more like everyone. But also, once we have these projects going, then we pitch that music. So that music is more up front and center in the you know the world's eyes. Um, and then our our focus in that too is how do we actually do the work with equity? Then you know, by pitching the music, we're increasing the likelihood of them earning, you know, placements. Um, you know, we also want to change who our top earners are in our catalog. They look a certain way, um, you know, nothing wrong with that. But we also mm -hmm. want to be, let's say, in our, you know, top 10% earners. How does that look? Yeah, are we seeing more women, more, you know, uh, folks from the different communities across the world, um, identities, ages, whatever it may be, we want to make sure that it is more representative of the world and our, you know, external communities here in Portland or across the country. So it's not just, 
the same people all the time winning. And that's where we can actually create that impact for the artist. So that's something that gets me really excited. This artist collab program that we have, but also with our team, when we're pitching music, we are specifically strategic about it too. So it's not just, hey, look, you have, you know, John Doe's music over here and they have five great songs. It's like, actually, let's look at the whole catalog. Let's look at who we are, you know, whose music we're not only um, creating in-house, but also if they're sharing their uh, portfolio with us, let's pitch that too, you know, this stuff will fit really well. So we are doing that day in and day out. It's just work that becomes intrinsic once you are like, a, you know, you have a clear um, kind of like, this is what we do, you know, you embed it. Yeah. Equity has to be yeah. embedded in what you yes. do. I love that. And so I'm listening to you and people might yeah. be thinking, well, what does that have to, how does that even apply to, right? Uh, the corporate yeah. sector, for example, with employees. Yeah. Let's yeah. say, for example, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you how, because I, I, you were talking and I'm like, oh my God, this is exactly how it should be done. And yeah. so, for example, right? Yeah. You sign people on, mm -hmm. right? And uh, to work with you at your company, and find out what they're interested in and foster their well-being as a whole individual. So the same with the artist, right? You sign them on, but you let them have that autonomy. You're not yeah. micro, you know, you're not micromanaging yeah. their lives, That's right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're giving them freedom, right? Just to be, right? And so the same thing with employees, you know, find out, get to know them, find out what other interests they have, you exactly. know, and support them as they explore other stuff. Right? right. Um, and that yeah. includes giving them enough time to go vacation. If someone likes rock climbing, then support that, you know, stuff like that. The whole person approach. Right. But but promoting freedom and autonomy, not grabbing them by the balls. Right. That you're yeah. mine and you can't do yeah. anything else. So that's number one. Then the, yeah. the collaborative thing. Right. Promoting right. this these collaborative experiences that support professional development. And right. innovation, right? And that can happen at work too. And so it's oh. almost like mentor peer to peer mentorship is what I'm hearing, where you put a a, a, a good lyricist, right? And a good composer with a producer and creating an environment where people can lean in on each other and yeah. learn from each other. That you could do that in the corporate sector, right? And so people from different backgrounds, different identities, different lived experiences can learn from each other and just connect at that human to human level and share their talents and the value that they bring to the table right am i am i good so far oh that's that's spot on <laughs> okay then the third thing with the professional development you mentioned that then after you do that and you create yeah. and you write and you you edify and build together then you seek for opportunities and so that is also great if internally at companies you see yeah. that someone's gaining new skills introduce them to other departments right sponsor them for opportunities internally Right. So that way they can grow and be um, positioned for that next promotion. So it's like landing the deal, right? right. With, exactly. with the client. So it's the same thing. So you foster, you grow, you build, you create together, collaborate, um, elevate, edify, and build these skills to then position them where they can get a promotion. And in the case, in your case, it's revenues. In this case, it's a higher salary. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then that way, and that way, they're able to pay it forward. And so then, I I see those parallels, right? And and making oh, okay. sure that you know everyone's duly representing that everyone's voice. I love when you said um about how when you present a um uh like a portfolio of songs, you don't say, oh, this artist, like you don't um how do you say um intentionally um identify artists and presents those first. But you offer, right, a kaleidoscope, right, a, like a broad um, right. a range of options and then let let the cards fall where they may. So that way everyone has an equal stake at that exactly. opportunity. Right. And so the same can be in the, done in the corporate sector. Right. When opportunities show up, right. do a blanket Right. Don't start calling your friends in this department, in that department. Right. Just make sure that it's out in the open. So everybody and encourage everyone. Right. To apply. 
uh, exactly. for the job. And so, yeah, I, I love that. Um, and, yeah, and I, that's how, right, you, impl- you embed, I love that word, that you embed it into the way you work and that, function, right? Yeah. yeah. That is like where, uh, you know, you mentioning earlier, like, yeah, since since 2020, I feel like, you know, companies have been kind of dropping from this like movement. Again, that it was a movement. It wasn't going to be a, a, a moment. It's yeah. a movement. So it's something that like, it is not easy, but you have to be committed. And if you are not committed, you're not going to, you know, make it. Um, it has to, that commitment has to come from everyone, you know, it has to come from the leadership, of course, but, um, staying committed and, and that's the work that we've been doing, I guess, in the past, however long, um, even before I was at Marmoset, it's the work of like embedding equity in what we do. So we needed to come up with a way to say, look, how are we doing it? But we're staying accountable to ourselves. Mm-hmm. We're not staying accountable to the world. That's not what it's about. Again, it's not about the external. It's what are you doing internally? where you can check with each other and say, oh yeah, mm -hmm. okay, now we have more room to grow. You know, that's okay. Failure is part of it. Realizing that you are on a journey, not, you know, this like upward mobility to like say, oh, look, by the end of 2023, we're going to publish this transparency report, which we have. It's like an impact report that we publish. Mm -hmm. Um, Every year looks different. Sometimes we are going down this direction that we really love. Other times we're like, oh my gosh, you know what? There's a hole there. Let's do something about it. That's good. Right. That, that retrospective, you know, like mm-hmm. feedback, but for yourself, not for others. It, it, that's, yeah. that's the piece about the performative stuff is like, it irks, you know, it kind of irks me. I'm like, it's not about others. It's about you and what you are doing, what you are. Are you following with your purpose? You know? Yeah. Is, but for us, it's, our purpose is to be community, but it is how are we contributing to ourselves, to our like you know our folks in at Martinset, like all of us are we taking care of each other, and also our artist community. And of course, in turn, yes, our you know the clients get they're satisfied and they're happy with with what we're doing, but the artists are that other community that we're here to serve, and that's just as important. So, and they stick yeah. with you and they represent you and they're going to be your ambassadors too, right? Yeah. And the same thing with um, with employees. You, right. if, if you embed it and they feel it. And that's the thing. I think, it, and I, this just hit me now. I just had an aha moment. Yeah. I think that these um, DEI initiatives and departments are um, being questioned because... Right. They're trying to compare success and measurements based on money and the bottom line, right? Right. And it's it's a whole other thing, right? It really, it's not, I mean, it could affect it, right? And you can tie it back with retention and right. with um, repeat business, right? There's stuff that you can, but it also has to do with well-being, right? right. And it has to do, so it's like... um. Not so much, not so much, it could be about revenues, but also about saving, right? Saving right. yourself from uh, culture clashes or negative feelings or yeah. people quitting or a, getting a bad rap, right? Um, right? And so on and so forth. So I think, um, I think that that's what's missing is that they're 100% just trying to link it all to um, the short game and revenues right? Instead of understanding the long game, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. Which is loyalty, um, trust, building trust, right? Um, okay. A sense of, of sense of belonging, of um, integrity, honesty, right? Those empathy, those kinds of values that I feel quite frankly, that this pandemic was a wake up call for the entire world. And people are valuing that so much more. It Totally. And I think like that, this is something for yeah all businesses to consider is the experience that folks have is the most important thing. You know, when, when we spend hours like a week, you know, and you're, you have so much time mm-hmm. and energy, your experience is what you're going to remember the most. And those are the feelings you, with you when you leave, like those mm-hmm. are the feelings 
but then people have to like work on, you know, like get rid of trauma and all that. It's through the experiences. So why not take uh, news from that and say, we need to improve the experience, you know? Like yeah. Being, so a lot of it is culture work, you know, when we talk about that is culture, building a culture, um, you know, just like with equity is like building a culture of like inclusivity, of candor, of, you know, uh, respect and all those things. But that is, that is part of that. Equity is like woven into all of that. Um, and it's not a, it's, yeah, there's no timeline for it. There shouldn't yeah. be. It's just an yeah. evergreen part of what the business, if the business considers values, this is the same thing. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Now, what are you feeling? So I'm going to pick your brain now. Yeah. Because I've had I've had like um, mixed feelings about lately, I want to say in the last year or so about ERGs, right? Employee resource groups, right. uh, with, because right. I think that they're valuable, obviously, to celebrate, you know, Latinx and African American yeah. or you know Asian Pacific Islanders or LGBTQ plus right communities. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's value in that, but yeah. I'm I kind of. I think that it might be an issue also for companies because it further divides internally. And so what are your thoughts about that? Because I think that might be part of the problem too, that we're still yeah. segmenting, right? So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, for us, the, because I am uh, leading our ERG uh, currently, it's called Diversity Team. Um, it's called what? Uh, diversity team. It, it's it's oh, for uh, diversity team. Okay, love it. <laughs> a little cheesy name, but you know we're no, we're doing... no, but it includes everybody. So, but ah. it's not for any specific, right? Okay, talk to me. It it includes yeah. everyone. Um, and I guess that has been through a journey itself too. Um, the group started as a business resource group, so BRG, um, mm -hmm. and that's where it was tied to all the goals of the business, you know, making sure that these things that we were working towards actually got done. We realized we surpassed that stage of like, just, you know, having to check in with each other about these things. It was like, we need to just do this, right? If we're saying we're mm -hmm. doing the work, we need to just do it, like, just like you would, you know, a process, you standardize it, you, you make it part of like a daily thing so that we moved from that point to having having the company rely so much on us for that to building a culture and that's our focus it's more broad but um it's still inclusive but it is about a culture of inclusivity um mm -hmm. and yet are there moments where we have to highlight like oh you know what this looks a little different um we noticed that you know Last year, we had 20 BIPOCs working at Marmesa, and now we have five. Something is different there, right? Because mm -hmm. you can look at it, you go back and say, was their experience not as good or whatever the case. So, but for us, it's about building, um, you know, more trust, a sense of belonging, um, establishing more connection, especially now more than ever, because we have folks on our team who are here in Portland, and we have folks distributed across the U.S., so that we don't have the same amount of, you know, experience, uh, face to face interaction with everyone on our team, too. And that is a whole nother kind of like newer, you know, thing, kind of uh, like, I guess, dilemma for businesses. How do you establish connection between folks who are actually physically there and folks who are, you know, not, you know, who are uh, distributed? Um, so we're really more on that while keeping in mind, yes, the moment where we need to dress something, uh, you know, where if an identity is, you know, if there's an issue with someone's identity or anything that would be, you know, not okay. Um, of course, yeah, those are, those are matters that we help with, but overall focus is through this work that we're doing, we're keeping in mind equity. That is still part of it. So it's, yeah. it's a greater sense of like everyone's experience. We're focusing on that type of work, the, the culture work. Yeah, I love that. And so, yes, because I think that that's, um, it's reaching that point is the challenge that people are facing is just that, that when you segment internally and don't have like just one unified front, 
then that's yeah. where it becomes still disjointed, right? And it just reflects what's happening outwardly in the in society that everyone's pulling, you know, right. to their own interest instead of having just one unified vision as a as a group. And yeah. then, you know, just celebrating everybody's uniqueness and uh, the contributions that they bring to the table. So yeah, that that's really that's really great. And so what what are what is your vision then for you know um independent artists and you know their their impact in the music industry and in how we do business really yeah and creators uh, right independent creators because i just feel that post pandemic this yeah. gig economy right has Correct. really um favored especially yeah. People in creative spaces, thank God, right? So this idea of the starving artist doesn't have to be um, anymore. And so what are your thoughts and what is your vision, right, for the future of creators um, post-pandemic? Yeah, I think um, part of it is like we work in a space where music is art, right? So it's about the value of art. And like you said, the creator space and um, even with, you know, or with, with artists, that has opened up like there's been a new door open for uh opportunities and for folks in the world to value that i will say social media has definitely been a key factor in that because that's where the exposure comes from uh yeah. you know so utilizing that as a mechanism to build on opportunities is so great for them and so we support that fully um you know we work with anyone and everyone so um you know we have uh creator partnerships too um through our uh music subscription we want to make sure that they're also you know working um you know using music to their um advantage you know to like elevate whatever it is that they're creating with the artists too you know we're supporting all of their um you know kind of like ways to gain exposure uh a lot of our a lot of our artists at marmas has um you know come from different places of the world we've increased mm -hmm. uh you know i think we have over 2,000 artists now that are everywhere in the world um wow. and so support that another way that we're thinking about it is when brands and you know uh, companies start seeing that value, which they are, right? Because they're relying a little bit more on these um, kind of like ways to advertise that are more artistically and creatively like, or maybe just new new ways of yeah. using creative. Yeah. I think that that's been great, um, but it's also great for the artists because then the artists too, maybe have more opportunities to do um, some custom compositions and things like that, that, maybe they wouldn't have the experience otherwise, or, you know, no one is really seeking them for that. Um, so it's been really nice to see that. Um, and then of course, you know, the artists who are using um, social media to, to gain exposure, we also want to support that and highlight it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're doing what we can to help their careers, but also supporting as we see them grow. And we've seen a lot of that too. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, it's it's about inclusivity and, and connection. Um, and we always want to um, make sure that we're doing right by the artists um, and also exposing them to more opportunities, um, whether yeah. it's putting them in touch with someone or, you know, it doesn't even have to be through just licensing through us. Yeah. It's any else. Um, we want to be bringing back folks, you know, to our space and having the Portland community and other folks, um, you know, who are visiting the city, um, you know, get to know the artists. So things like that. I think there's, there's something to be said about, you know, being community, really what that means. And that's what we're trying to do every day is, is like, make sure that that's what we're leading with. So I think just through being community, if you think back about, you know, like maybe your childhood or my childhood, like how yeah. that, that, how that, you know, grew as, as we got older or experienced life, um, there was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was our community, like whatever it was that people did, whether they gave us a plate of their favorite dish or, you know, that they mm -hmm. were sharing, that's what we're trying to do in our world. Like whatever the equivalent of that is, that's what we aim to do for the artists. Yeah. So yeah, I, we're just, we're just that happy to. 
to be in that space. And also um, we recognize our privilege too in the music mm -hmm. space. That, That's um, great. Yeah. That's awesome. And so I, so now with automation, you know, and yeah, what, what are your, yeah, you know, that was coming, right? Because <laughs> that's like uh, the hot topic everywhere. Yeah, I know, you know, to me, I, you know, cause I'm in the creative spaces too, right. With marketing yeah. and, you know, and like this podcast that, you know, Chris and I produce and stuff, you know, so we're, we're in the creative spaces too. And I feel this is my opinion. I want to hear you out too. You know, that um, nothing will replace lived human experiences. You can't, right? And actually, my daughter's, uh, she draws. She oh, does drawing. Thing. Yeah, she's a really pretty. She's, she's a teenager. She draws very well. And I tell her, keep on practicing. Because I yeah. predict that in the future, like um, physical art. Okay, lost it's going to be. It's gonna cost a lot of start. money, right? And that, yeah, that yeah. produced by by a human being. But what what are your thoughts um, about about yeah. this topic of automation? Oh, like that's a whole yeah. other show. I know. I, know. <laughs> I mean, we've ever everyone that we know uh, is asking us the same because if you're in music, everyone you know the all the case studies are happening now where it's like, oh look, this one sets a precedent or this happened, and then. So we're, we're looking at all of that. Um, and I feel like we're all just still asking questions, but mm -hmm. I would say that elements of AI in music have already been in place that are fine. And some of us may not even be aware of it. Same with other mm -hmm. types of other yeah. digital art, they're different space so, or different types. So that it's not, that that isn't so new. I think what everyone is thinking of is the amount of impact that it's going to have on someone's, you know, ability to do what they do and, mm -hmm. you know, for that value to go by the wayside. And that's the scary thing, but we yeah. see that this is also like you mentioned, you know, like you tell your daughter, keep drawing, keep doing the thing because mm -hmm. your art is so valuable, no matter what technology comes along. And yeah look at history we always have to kind of repeat ourselves that like you know we look at the technology of ancient mayans and all this stuff and people go back to that stuff and we're like oh my gosh this is magnificent it doesn't matter yeah. that we have iphones and things and whatever so all of it is valuable so keeping that in mind i guess it makes it less scary and daunting mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. there is a space where that is maybe even going to increase in value because there is this new technology that maybe might push it and, or, you know, try to, um, I don't want to say like compete with it, but it will be in, in that sphere. You well, know, people will the, start questioning, oh, did you use AI 100% to produce this? Right. Yeah. And then it's like, eh, okay, so then I could have done that. Right. You know, if right. it's 100% if yeah. produced. And I think that those qualifiers right. have to be part of this conversation. Right. Because then, you know, then how original is it, right? And if you want to yeah. be original, ¿verdad? You need to get out of your heart. Last time I checked, <laughs> last time I checked, right? The machine doesn't have a heart. But anyway, that's just yeah. me. Um, I just, I, what was that? El sazón, right? Even the... the, the yeah, la totally. Pasión. You need the sofrito, el the sazón, yeah, yeah, the little onions, and yeah. Yeah. Totally. And so then I, I think there's gonna, people are gonna, you know, realize eventually that's where we're gonna land, right? And still yeah. valuing human interaction, human creativity, original yeah. content, original sassiness and zest, right? Um, yeah. in, in, in the creative arts. And so I'm just glad that during this, uh, -huh, yeah. this exploratory period, let's call it that, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, that they're stewards, right? Like you and champions, right? Of creators that are standing right. steadfast, right? right. Um, uh, yeah. Supporting, providing opportunity, uh, development, you know, you know, collaboration and really right. creating these safe spaces where magic can happen and they can yeah. really see right the vision that, that you guys have so any yeah. any parting yeah. words um jose this has been a wonderful conversation 
honestly, thank you. Thank you for having me. This was a great conversation too. And um, yeah, I loved it. I think this was a just, I'm, I, you know, it opened up my eyes to some of the things that I want to go back and share with the team and be like, Hey, you know, like, let's talk more about this. So uh, yeah. I love that, that you have this podcast, that these are really intentional and meaningful conversations. Uh, and yeah, I really feel honored that, uh, you know, that I, I got to be a part of this and represent for Marmoset, but also share more about our artists and hopefully more people get to know, you know, what that world is like, you know, the awareness is really helpful. And I think the more we know, the better, you know, and, and the more we want to understand too. And I think that's important for human, you know, for humanity. Yeah. So. yeah. Totally. And to know that, yeah, you could be at work and people can care, right? right. About what you're, about what, yeah. about what you're doing. And so and you're li a living example of that. Thank you so much, Jose, for, for joining us and uh, we'll be, we'll be in touch. Okay. All right. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of I Have Something to Say, where subject matter experts are unafraid and unapologetic about sharing their perspectives regarding issues that impact our lives. They speak up because basically they give a shit. So if you're tired of canned answers and want to finally hear real people cut through the BS and talk about real issues, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Sami Heyman Marrero from Urbander, and behind our mixer is our producer, Chris Mayoka from You Do You.